my friend and welcome back. My name is Hannah and today I'm going to be talking about a new foundation that I've added to my collection. So if you're curious about what I'm wearing on my face, what I'm doing in other pockets of the internet, um, what I'm mentioning in today's video, I always have links in the description box down below so don't forget to check it out. Um, but it has, it's officially that time where I've run out of my Fenty eavesdrop. Um, and if you've been watching my channel for a while, I have been using that product like every day since it came out and it's like what 2022 did that product come out in 2020 was it 2021 i want to say that product came out in 2020 and um i finally got through it and i really love that product like that is one of the items that i would repurchase the only reason I didn't repurchase it is because, you know, I, I make content and I, I wanted to see if there was something new, something different out there that might kind of cater to my needs a little bit more. Um, I do wear from time to time like a heavier foundation, but the heaviest foundation that I'll wear is this Sephora Best Skin Ever. Um, this is more of like a gel-like consistency and I think even this is kind of considered a skin tint over the standard foundation. Um, the Skin tint is different from a tinted moisturizer in that a tinted moisturizer is a like face lotion with a tint to it, um, where a skin tint is a very diluted foundation. So with a tinted moisturizer, you'll still get like a lot of that skincare property. Um, that's why you'll see a lot of like sunblocks that maybe have a tint to it or like, um, I don't know, like skincare that has like a tint to it. I need a little bit more coverage than that, um, but I don't need too much coverage, so I really like the skin tints for that purpose. Um, it's cloudy, so like my lighting, I can already tell, is like getting all crazy. Apologies in advance. Um, but for me, the skin tint is, I don't know, I this is my skin base. I don't have what I, I mean, you might correct me in the comments down below, but I don't think I have bad skin. But this is also because I pay attention to what my skin needs and kind of like the habits that my skin has. So I work a normal nine to five job and I can't really, even with the best skin ever being more of a skin tint, that is too heavy for me to wear day in and day out um, as my work makeup. I can wear that for like an evening out or maybe you know if I'm like having like a weekend or like if I'm cosplaying, going to a con for a weekend kind of thing that's different, um, but if it's something that I'm wearing all day for long periods of time, um, I, I can't have anything too heavy on my face. I do have acne prone skin. Um, I don't think I have like, I have little things on my face, but that's more from like dehydration than it is like product. Um, but that's why I really love the skin tint. So. Even with my more like acne prone skin, sometimes the tinted moisturizers make my skin freak out. And I do have like an oilier T-zone. So for me, having like a moisturizer, like my oils kind of shine through. So um, that information is only important for those of you who are using this video as like a, I don't know, like a help to buy a product. But in today's video, I will be reviewing the Rose Ink Skin Enhanced Luminous Tinted Serum. Um, this isn't a new product by any means. People have talked about it for a while. I think for maybe as long as like the Fenty e Shop, I'm not quite sure. Um, but I wanted to make this video specifically because I am using shade 60 and I, I see this a lot when I look at comments you know like on Sephora and things when talking about uh, products a lot of people were you know they they find that the shade matching is a little bit difficult and it can be um, but it's not because it has like limited shade range so for things like skin tints and tinted moisturizers usually this uh, shade selection will be a lot smaller because it's more of a it's a lighter coverage so it can kind of umbrella, you know, it, it can fit a lot under its umbrella is what I'm trying to say. Um, so one shade that works for me might work for a, no a number of different shades that maybe are a little bit darker or even a little bit lighter than myself. What I say is really important when looking at skin tints and tinted moisturizers is what that undertone is going to be. You can go a shade lighter, you can go a shade darker, you know, and not really notice it as much, but if the undertone isn't correct for you, 
for me it's a dead giveaway and that's what gives like the unmatching kind of shade um and when it comes to skin tints i personally always go a shade darker or what i think is a shade darker versus what is a shade lighter because for me if i put something that's too light on my face it kind of makes me look sick if I go a shade too dark, I can kind of lighten that up with concealer and, and kind of fix it and correct it. It's a lot easier to uh, baby in that way. If I go too light, it's kind of harder for me to, because then I don't know, you start using bronzer, contour, um, things like that, and then you have the concealer, and it's just, a lot of those shades just don't really work for me and what I'm going for. Um, I like to think that I'm like a light to medium, more medium when it's warmer out than when it's colder out but I have like more I, I have like a warmer base I don't want to say I'm a true yellow base but I'm not like a pink yet yeah, like pink red kind of base either I noticed that foundation products that have more of like a red base to them tend to make it look like I'm wearing like an oxidized foundation um, so Again, that's only important if you're using this video to purchase this product. Otherwise, you're just enjoying content. So um, this shade, I believe, is like the light to medium with neutral undertones. It was between this one and a different shade that I was going to choose. Um, but the other shade, I think, was like too light. They're like I think it was the 40 I was going to get because the 50 is... A uh, light to medium with like pink red undertones and like that's that's just not me that wouldn't match me but then the 40 that was like the light light to medium and neutral or like a light neutral seemed too light for me um, so then I went with the 60 and this should be the light to medium neutral if I'm remembering that correctly if I can find a picture of the tones listed and like what the shade range is supposed to be I'll have it listed here um, but this is also I don't want to say this is a knockoff of the Chanel foundation but Chanel has a product too that has like that looks like this it's just like I don't know it's like a serum with like the product kind of like in it it looks kind of gross when you're looking at it it almost looks like an old foundation put it on the back of your hand and break it up um, I've read and seen that like using a brush is like the best way to go about it and I do have a new brush for today. Um, I did get the Rare Beauty Liquid Touch uh, foundation brush and look the Rose Ink does have a brush that comes with it but I've seen mixed reviews for it and the handle like when I've seen pictures of people holding the brush in its hand in their hands, um, it does look really small and tiny. And for the price point, I think it was like a $30 brush. I just wasn't going to spend that kind of money on a brush. I think you can use, like my favorite foundation brush is this Nabla one. Um, this is the foundation buffer brush. But they don't sell this at Ulta. You can get this off Beauty Bay. And Beauty Bay is easy to purchase off of. And I really do enjoy this brush. But this Rare Beauty brush was $28. And I think I've read really good reviews about it. And not just this one, but the concealer brush. And just like the brushes in the line. And it looks the most similar to the uh, Rose Ink brush. You know, where it's more of like this tinted or like slanted kind of brush. So we'll see. Um, it does feel fairly dense, so I think I should be able to apply it fairly easily. Uh, but let's put the product on the back of my hand and let's see what happens. I just did one pump and this is what it looks like. It is kind of runny. It just feels like a serum on the back of my hand. But this is what the tone looks like. And um, I'm gonna, I don't know, should I break it up with my fingers? Should I break it up with the brush? I will put my brush directly into it. I don't know if I'm gonna regret that. And then I'm gonna apply it to my face. I'm, it's really light and I don't know if I'm going to need more product 
so I don't know I think I wouldn't advise putting your brush directly into it because it seemed like the brush just kind of ate it up let's see if I do something like this and kind of get it on my face and then use what's left on the back of my hand and let's blend this out. I think that applies a little bit better. I think, yeah, I would suggest kind of applying it to the back of your hand and using your finger to kind of spot cover and then use your brush to blend it out. Otherwise, this looks really pretty. And this is a nice brush, like it feels just like the Noble one, like as far as like the soft kind of like density to it. And my skin doesn't feel irritated. I'm more of a sponge kind of person myself. But like I said, um, all of the reviews and things that I've seen of this video, the product always just kind of looked better with the brush. And I'm thinking also as well because it is more of like a gel serum -y kind of base that the sponge would just kind of eat it up. Now I wonder, do I look like too, too dark? Is the shade too dark for my face? This isn't really my natural lighting for when I do my makeup. So it's kind of hard for me to tell. But I'm just kind of working it in until like it doesn't really feel like wet on my face anymore. Otherwise it seems to have gone in pretty nicely. I'm just going to bring a little bit of it down my neck. and just kind of blend it out. Okay, um, I'm gonna do my, basically the rest of my face because I don't really have anything new to add, um, but I will let you know how the makeup ages and uh, come back with some final thoughts and opinions. So this is the final look. Um, I did go in with the NYX Concealer Serum, uh, the Pat McGrath Nude Venus Blush Palette for Holiday. Um, I did use the bronzer from the uh, Charlotte Tilbury Nude Gasm Face Palette. That item is discontinued, um, but they just came out with their new holiday one. And I did go in with the Club Nebula um, Eyeshadow Palette from Kleidos. That is also another item that has been discontinued unless Kleidos like pleasantly surprises us for holiday and re-releases it. I, I don't see that happening, but we can dream. Um, so let's talk about the product. Oh, first let's talk about the brush because I feel like this is going to be the quickest one. I like this. I like this a whole lot. If you were a fan of the Nabla like brush that I showed earlier, you're really going to like this one. Um, this is a really nice foundation brush. I didn't feel like, again, I have acne prone skin. I don't think I have like super sensitive skin, but I'm more of like a, a sponge user because sometimes I feel like the brush really kind of like irritates my skin. This is really nice and I don't have to push really hard. It's actually a really nice brush to kind of get around my face. And because it's angled, I can kind of get it into the crevices that I need it to get into. This is worth it. Like this is a really nice brush. Um, now let's talk about the skin tint. I really, really enjoy this. I think, let me backtrack. I really enjoy this, but I think I kind of screwed up application a little bit. Um, I think for me, doing two pumps is like my max amount of product I, I want to use. Um, I would still suggest pumping it onto the back of your hand and kind of placing the product on your face and then using the brush to break it up on your face. Um, I think kind of breaking it up on the back of your hand and applying it, the brush did just kind of absorb all of that product. 
but it's weird. I don't think it oxidizes, but it does this weird thing where like I felt like there was nothing on and then as I was like applying it and letting it set, like it just seemed like coverage. Um, and it's really, really pretty. I'm... I don't know, I don't usually do my makeup with my soft box light on. Um, I just, you know, will use my window and like my, my lights in my room. Um, I don't think this is like, I, this is pretty much like my exact shade is what I'm trying to say. I just, maybe I was using such a light foundation or like, I don't know, maybe because the light is like shining on my neck in a way, I don't, I don't know, but like, I don't know, that also just kind of looks exactly like my skin so maybe I just haven't been using the right products on my face I don't know but it's like a perfect match it's really really pretty um, I didn't find any like weird like I don't know I saw in some of the reviews some users saying that like they had pilling when using it with certain primers or with powders and things like that you do have to let it set, but that's the same with like any product. Um, I did mention this while I was applying that I was kind of working it into my face until it didn't feel as wet anymore. And once you kind of reach that point and you just kind of let like let it set and let it be, you'll see that it kind of stops being shiny and is more of like a, like I don't know, kind of like the Fenty e Shop where it's just more of like that skin matte kind of, you know, where it's like not fully dewy but not fully matte. It's just like that skin skin-like kind of consistency and it's really nice. I didn't have a problem when applying blush or contour or powders or anything like that over it so I think it might also be like a learning curve with the primers because primers like the Milk Hydro Grip and the NYX uh, Plump Right Back that are more of like those jelly kind of like grippy primers when you apply them you kind of have to let them sit and do its thing. Um, same with like this product it, once it like kind of feels like tacky but not sticky, then you can put product on top of it. Um, if it's still kind of like sticky to the face, it hasn't set yet, so anything that you put over it and any kind of rubbing you do will cause pilling. Um, so I hope that helps. But uh, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below. What brushes from Rare Beauty do you also enjoy? Should I just invest in that concealer brush as well? Because I really like that foundation brush. Um, how do you feel about this rose ink skin tint? Is this something that you already have in your collection? Was this something that you were maybe considering? I think this is only just a little bit more expensive than the Fenty Ease Drop. I'm thinking, um, I don't know, I want to say that the rose ink one was like $40 and then the uh, Rare Beauty, or excuse me, the uh, Fenty Ease Drop was like $36, something like that. Um, I'll have prices posted but uh, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below and um, if you liked hanging out with me today and you would like to see more make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out and I will see you guys in the next one bye